we're coming together, some in our homes and some in our cars, to honour the name of Christ. We pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may each give ourselves to the service of God. For the first time since Sunday the 15th of March, the people of this parish are joining in some sense of togetherness for worship, whether listening on the landline, looking at your phone or tablet, or watching from a car in one of the church car parks. We grab with zeal this much awaited for and yet imperfect opportunity to worship and delight in God and his people. The greeting. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth will proclaim your praise. Let us worship the Lord. All praise to his name. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. <laughs> that we have sinned against you. We have broken your commandments. We have often been selfish, and we have not loved you as we should. For these and all our sins, 
forgive us, we pray, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Your word is a lantern to my feet. And a light upon our path. O Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm forever in the heavens. Let us then receive the word of the Lord. So may the light of your presence shine into our hearts. The reading is from 1 Peter chapter 4, beginning at verse 12, and chapter 5, beginning at verse 6. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power for ever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pray together a collect of the word. Father God, we feel under pressure today because all around our world people are facing the same dangers as us, and yet nations are reacting at different paces and in different ways. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you suffered before us and for us and you are suffering with us today. We trust you to bring us through this trial and all our trials until one day we are restored to life in all its fullness and your kingdom comes. Holy Spirit, abide with us until the morning comes and we reign with the ascended Christ in his everlasting glory. Amen. These weeks have been, if nothing else, strange weeks. We have been surprised by how some people have coped well, while others have really struggled. 
people we once thought vulnerable, the likes of the 100-year-old captain Sir Tom Moore, have excelled. And people we once thought had it all, perhaps in the world of celebrity, have succumbed to depression. And people of all ages and all walks of life have suffered sickness and even death, particularly our older community. We're all somewhere in between. Peter told his readers, and we would do well to hear it, that we should not be surprised at the ordeals we go through. The particular ordeals for the first Christians were forms of victimization and persecution, often at the hands of the Romans. Our ordeal includes the limitation of our well-won freedoms, the restriction on the use of our well-earned resources, the closure of churches, which people in the past have shed blood to keep open, and the frustration at some of the weaknesses we see in how it is all being handled, even though the best of us could scarcely do any better. The resurgence in the interest in things spiritual at this time, as those in the know will tell us is happening, is not a sign of a spiritual ordeal for us. But the active prevention of Christian fellowship in person is an ordeal. And I'm so impressed the ways in which many of you have risen to the challenge and are keeping in touch and praying for each other. So what does Paul Peter say to people undergoing ordeals? Two sentences are enough for today. He says, Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may lift you up. And cast all your anxiety on him for he cares for you. What does it mean to humble ourselves under God's mighty hand? Did you ever see a child struggle to escape from its parent's hand? Never mind it is a fast, busy road, or a thronged, crowded street, or even near a cliff face. The child is saying, I know best, I can do this, let me do it myself. And it's so frustrating for the loving parent because we realize the child has learned much. We accept they can do many things. We want them to manage on their own. But in the current circumstances, love tells us to hold on. The child needs to be humble and accept the parent's hand. When life afflicts us, especially at the level that we are not fit to cope, we need, like a child, to humble ourselves and hold on to God's mighty hand. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Among the loveliest moments in married life are those where we find ourselves at our wit's end and we turn to our spouse and they take hold of our worries and whisk them away. I will handle that. You just do what you can, dear. Why do they step in? Because they care for us. Maybe you have a brother or sister in your family or in your church who similarly steps up to care. And Peter tells us of one greater than the best wife, closer than the dearest husband, stronger than the most wonderful brother or sister. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Peter says, he cares for you. He died for you. He lives for you. And today we recall at ascension tide that he reigns for us in heaven. We have each responded to the invitation to come to our drive-in church today or to sign in. You have done well. Imagine in a few months' time when our muted worship can be voiced aloud when our muffled sounds are marvellous, when our distance is diminished and our fellowship strong again. Paul spoke in 1 Corinthians 13 and 12, For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, but then 
we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Our worship is meant to be preparation for heaven, a foretaste even. And we hope today has been a step closer to that experience, muffled perhaps, but hasn't it been marvellous to be here? We sing our response as we sing the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. in him. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We, we believe, believe and trust, trust in, in one God, God Father, Father, Son, and, and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. The prayers will be led by four church leaders who work in our diocese. A Presbyterian, a Methodist, a Baptist and a Roman Catholic will lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Good morning to everyone in the diocese. I've been given the privilege of leading you in prayer. Lord God, as the season of Pentecost approaches, we remember your fire came upon the apostles gathered together in one place. We remember that fire burns inwardly. Lord, please warm the hearts of all your people in this diocese. Kindle the flame of sacred love in every heart. And may we all be consumed by your grace and goodness, truth and holiness. Fire also travels upwardly. Come afresh, Lord, upon every parish. Release worship and adoration. May relationship with the living flame triumph over ritual and routine. And lastly, fire extends outwardly. 
Lord, just as the flames spread, remind us of the importance of outreach. Forgive us when we become parochial and insular, rather than kingdom-focused and outward-looking. Give us a vision for this island home and much further afield that countless millions will come to know Jesus as Saviour and Lord. Wind of the Spirit, fan the living flame. Lord, send your fire. Amen. Lord, we thank you that in this time, with so much bad news, we're also hearing good news stories about community coming together to support one another. Lord, make us, your people, supernaturally equipped to love our neighbours as we love ourselves. Father God, we give you thanks for every person who's serving our community as a key worker. Medical staff and shelf stackers, emergency services and couriers, farmers and postal workers. God, give them your protection, give them energy, give them resilience. And Lord, for those who find themselves unemployed or set aside, we ask you to protect their minds from depression and despair. May the safety net of our society catch them and may they find their sense of identity and worth and purpose in you. Amen. And Lord Jesus, I ask for your blessing on this particular branch of your family, the church, the Diocese of Down and Dremore. Mould them and shape them. Empower them to be everything that you are calling them to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we take time today to pray for the churches across the island of Ireland. We pray your strength and wisdom to fill each leader, pastor and minister. We lift the diocese of Down and Remore to you specifically today and ask for blessing and wisdom in every leader and especially for Bishop David and his family at this time. These are precarious times that we're living in and we can no longer lead from our old ways, memories or traditions. We need a fresh imagination to lead our people well and more importantly, ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church in these days. We pray against COVID-19 and any other thing that would bring sickness and hindrance to the advancement of your kingdom. May your people rise with fresh power. May the Holy Spirit refresh and renew and baptize us all over again. May your church rise out of this pandemic with a fresh confidence and strength in you, renewed and refined. We know that it's not by might, nor is it by strength, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. And we thank you that you're building your church and the gates of hell cannot and will not prevail against it. Thank you that according to Ephesians 1, 4, that we've been chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world, chosen for such a time as this. These things we pray in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless you. Father, your Son Jesus, anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power, went about everywhere doing good. He showed care for the needy. He healed the sick, curing all kinds of diseases. He delivered those held captive by any sort of bondage. Be with your church. Anoint us with the Holy Spirit and with power. Strengthen us to pursue the mission of Jesus today. Give us caring hearts that we may show compassion to the afflicted. Let us not think of what we lack, but of the good we can do for those who are suffering in mind, heart, soul, or body. Lighten your children's burdens. Be their refuge in trials, their strength in sickness, their comfort in sorrow. May they experience your loving kindness through us. It is where brothers and sisters are united that you give your blessing. May we pursue life's journey together. Join in integrity of faith and unite in the bond of love all those whom one spirit has consecrated. Upon your faithful people of the Church of Down and Remore, who have been fervently united in prayer, animated by holy hope throughout these past weeks, send forth anew your Holy Spirit. May your love be poured into their hearts. 
May they be one. May we all be one so that the world may believe. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Mercifully give us faith to know that, as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And as we go out as God's people, we pray together. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Christ, our exalted King, pour on you his abundant gifts, make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. We go in the peace of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. We're going to finish by singing together the hymn, Be Thou My Vision, hymn number 643.